live. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Now, experts say the decline in men's hormones increases their risk of developing chronic heart disease and many other illnesses. Generally, though, men don't pay attention to their health as much as women do. Because of this, they die six to eight years younger than their female counterparts. Now, to tell us more and shed some light, we're joined by Dr. Lorraine Becker, a specialist in men's health. Dr. Good morning, welcome. Good morning. Before we even talk about the hormones issue and, and, and the fact that it's um, decreasing, let's talk about just the fact that are men starting to pay more attention or are we still having the conversation that I was part of years ago, that men don't necessarily care about their health, that they um, are living in this la-la land, <laughs> that if we're not coughing, we're okay? Oh, no, absolutely. I think men don't take regard of their health. They just don't consider it. They've actually shown that men go to the doctor until they're about 17, 18 years old because their mothers take them, and then they stop going to the doctor. And only later on when there's a crisis do they actually go to the doctor. So they, they kind of just don't even go for regular general checkups. And you know one of the things I mentioned to you before we started this conversation is that I refuse to believe that there hasn't been an increase, but I'm willing to admit that the increase might be amongst the younger generation, that yeah. there's a grouping of young men that, see, that they see the benefit of going to the, the doctor, visiting the hospitals. And I do think the younger men are much better <laughs> at it than the older men, that when they've got something wrong with them, they'll come in to, in, in to see me. But, you know, I only see patients when they're in crisis and when it's a man. They'll come in, you know, they've got this big, tough exterior that they, mm. they don't have anything wrong with them. And a lot of the times it's preventable illness that they have, that often if somebody dies of a heart attack, if you go back in their history, you'll find that they've had chest pain for the last week or two, but they've just been toughing it out. And that's really ridiculous. Because it's so amazing that you mentioned that because we, we I, and, and when I say we, I'm talking on behalf of the men, uh, uh, the men gender group here. Sometimes you feel a niggle and you think it might be because I went to gym. Or how do, what, what should be the, 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 the modus operandi here? If, you, if, if there's a pain that you can't explain, you need to go to the doctor. I think if there's a pain that you can't explain and it's persistent, or okay. if it causes sweating or nausea or any other si significant symptom, then go to see the doctor. I mean, you don't have to run to the doctor every five minutes, but you certainly should be yeah. having regular general checkups. And we feel that men should know their numbers. So they should know their cholesterol. They should okay. know what their blood pressure is. They should know what their waist circumference is. Because a man that gets a waist circumference greater than 94 centimeters has a higher risk of developing heart disease and diabetes and high blood pressure and all the other things. So it's an easy measure. Go home and measure your waist circumference. Over 94 centimetres, go and get a checkup. I, I want to I touch on hormones, but I almost feel like I've got to ask the next question related to um, heart disease and all of that. There seems to be an increase in heart attack-related diseases or, or heart attack-like conditions. I don't think there's an increase. I think we've always seen it. But I think okay. what we're seeing is, you know, perhaps as you get older, you tend to see friends that have had heart attacks. Because so you do enter that phase where your friends yes, start dying yes, off. Yes, and you suddenly actually think, oh, this is something that I should be taking note of. But I really do believe that every man over the age of 40 should be having a checkup. They should be checking their prostates. They should be checking their blood pressure and all their numbers. They should know them. When we started this uh, conversation in the intro, we talked about a decline in men's hormones. Just kind of elaborate more for me on that okay, so we well, can wrap our head around You know, what menopause that means. in women is very defined. It's when they have their last period. When men, the, the hormones start deteriorating from the age of about 40. And they actually, we know that about 45, 38% of men will have problems with their hormones, where their hormone levels have dropped to a significant amount of level that it actually causes them to have significant problems. But it hasn't it always been around, Doctor? Is this new it has. information? I mean, no, no, it's not new information, but uh, I think we've got new treatment for it. Okay. So, in fact, you know, the, the typical grumpy old man that used to come in <laughs> that was miserable and irritable <laughs> and past their best and, you know, that couldn't open the mayonnaise jar anymore and everybody just yeah. attributed to aging. They actually can treat that now, and you can live a healthy, normal life, a good sexual life as well. And I think that's very important for men. Doctor, do you find in your practice that a lot of what you're doing, although you're treating cases, but is a lot of what you're doing educating? Oh, yes, definitely. I think sort of 50% of what I do is educational. And I think it's very important at every contact with patients is to educate them. One of the other things that we're also talking about is men's hormone and heat disease, the link or the relationship. Well, certainly what happens with when men's hormones start dropping, it starts affecting every organ system of their body. So it affects memory, it affects mm. depression, it causes problems with muscles, but then it causes sexual problems as well, so that we land up seeing people that just don't have a desire yes. to have sex anymore. 
And that certainly is one of the, the intricate things that we can determine. When a man starts having problems with erections, we know that two to five years later they'll have a heart attack. In the, I must admit that I'm quite happy. In the last couple of years, I've heard a lot of waist circumference related to heart attacks, diabetes, and stuff like that. But is it starting to sink in? Because I must admit, when I walk in the malls or wherever I am, I still see an, a, a large grouping of men with huge bellies. And, oh, huge. I mean, if you, you know, And in my friend circle, too. Oh, no, know? absolutely. If you look at, go to a rugby match or a soccer match and just look at the people's waist circumference, you see that we've got a very unhealthy population. Because we know as soon as their waist circumference increases, the risks for all these problems increase as well. Where do we sit on the scale of, of, of men's education around health in comparison to the rest of the world? Look, I think we're really trying. You know, I went to the first men's health conference in 2009, and we're trying and trying and trying to educate the doctors as well as educating the patients about men's health because men's health is so, so very important. We would really like the men of our country to be as healthy and as well for as long as possible mm. so that they can be economically active and they can be fit and well for, for many, many years. If there's a father, husband, brother sitting at home right now and he's suspecting something is wrong, Go and get a checkup, for heaven's sakes. You know, they always wait until the last second before they do something. So I tend to land up seeing patients in crisis. And it's crazy. We can de deal with it and treat it much before it becomes a crisis and prevent these illnesses. Dr. Ryan Becker, thank you very much uh, for joining us and shedding some light and kind of just reiterating the stuff that I'm, some of, I'm sure some of us know in the back of our heads that it's a very important. Dr. Ryan Becker, especially in men's health, uh, joining us here on the show talking about men's health and just some of the stuff that is actually quite preventable. And all you've got to do after the age of 40 is make sure that you, you and your doctor become best friends.